by now, we have refactored our app.js file. We have written some CSS so that our app actually looks like something real. And we've learned about JSX, which is how we write HTML in our React components. We've learned about props. And now I'm going to teach you about something that's a the more advanced version of what we do in React. Oh, we also learned about iteration inside our JSX in ways that we don't have to write a ton of HTML. We can just map items in an array to a specific JSX pattern, which is a list item with the name and the price. So at this point, I think it's time to up our game a little bit. We've learned a little bit about how like data flows unidirectionally, what they call unidirectional data flow and how it's central to the way React apps are built. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to refactor our app to allow users to interact with it and order items off the menu. Now to do this, we're going to upgrade our, our pure functional components here. And, but they're called pure functional components because they just take in some data and display it. Nothing else, right? So this is fine. And most of your components probably should look like this. Just be a function that returns some JSX. That's pretty much everything should be. If, if you don't need to make it anything more than that, you shouldn't. But what it means to be more than that is what we saw at the very beginning. Remember when we saw that class app extends whatever? I'm actually going to bring that back. Class app extends component. Now we don't have component in here anymore. So I can just say like react dot component and that is totally fine. Now, this is, this one was tricky for me. I was thinking, you know, before we started, decided just to do this today. How am I going to teach classes? Cause there's two words here, this keyword class and this keyword extends that honestly, if you've never done a ton of object oriented programming in react or in another language is going to look relatively alien, but it, it, if you get just follow along with me here and if you don't understand what's going on, that's okay. I honestly, I, I'm not, I, I'm not even worried about you totally getting everything that happens here. I want you to understand the main reason why we do it. And actually there's, you don't have to do this anymore. There's now something called react hooks, react hooks, which means you don't even need to do this whole thing that I'm about to teach you, but react hooks is relatively new. And if I were to teach you react hooks, there'd be a couple other things I have to explain around destructuring. And so I'm just going to stick to the old way of doing things, which is to create a class and the two difference between a, the main difference between a function, a fun, pure functional component, like the app we have here and this class app extends react component is this class, this app is it has a bunch of extra stuff packaged on it because we use this extends react component. It means that the people who created react Facebook took have a bunch of functionality that they automatically give to this app component as soon as we say class app extends react.component. Or if you want to import the component like this from React, you don't even need to say react.component, you can just say class app extends component. And basically all you need to know is that they're the same thing except they have a couple new, let's say customs in the way we write a class you have to give every class a render method. And this method, this render method here is what actually gets called. You know, this function, all it does is it executes this function. It runs this code from top to bottom and then it returns some JSX. Classes work a little different. Classes, whenever they want to display the HTML here, they call this render method. And so the render method is what should return some JSX here. Is that cool with you? You all right with that so far? So all the way you can think about it is there's nothing else that's different here other than the class app is just like a functional component in that it returns some JSX. And so before our function, our, our app looks like this, we're just gonna do the exact same stuff except we're gonna put all of this inside the render method, like so. So I'm gonna copy all of this. I'm gonna come here to my render method and I'm gonna put it, I'll paste it all in there. And I'm just going to indent it a little bit. And now, and I'm going to get rid of this old function. Actually, I'm just going to comment it out so that you don't, we can go, you can go back and look at the difference between them later, but that's all you need. That's it. And if you do that and press save, you see that nothing's really changed. Nothing's changed in our app. 
So those two things are pretty much the same, except we have to put everything inside a render method. And the render method then declares some variables and then returns some JSX. Now this is what's known as an ES6 class-based component. This, again, you'll, you'll recognize this from when we first bootstrapped the app through Create React App. But now we've built it ourselves, and there's nothing different about it yet, other than that it has this render method here. So, actually, you know what? I think that's enough. That, that's all you need to know for right now. We just refactored it to use classes. Now, next, let's talk about why classes are useful and how we use them. Cool? So I'm actually just going to end this video here, and we'll do it in the next one.